The first step in interpreting an arterial blood gas report is to look at the pH and determine whether the sample is acidic, alkalotic or normal. pH is a logarithmic scale related to the concentration of hydrogen ions. The lower the value, the more acidic the solution is. The higher the value, the more alkalotic. The next step is to identify what the primary disturbance is. Is it respiratory or metabolic? This is done by reviewing the PCO2, which relates to respiratory causes, and by reviewing the biocarbonate concentration, which relates to metabolic causes. Carbon dioxide reacts with water to produce carbonic acid, so the majority is carried in red blood cells. However, a small amount of carbon dioxide does dissolve in the blood. It must be transported from the individual cells to the lungs, where it is exhaled. If the carbon dioxide level rises and a patient cannot increase their respiratory drive, then there will be an increase in carbonic acid formation and the pH will fall. This leads to a respiratory acidosis. If the patient hyperventilates, then the carbon dioxide level will fall, and so there will be a reduction in carbonic acid. This will lead to a rise in the pH, leading to a respiratory alkalosis. Bicarbonate ions are the main metabolic component to buffer acids within the blood. They neutralise acid by reacting with hydrogen ions to form water. The majority of bicarbonate homeostasis is achieved through the kidneys. They can regulate the reabsorption of bicarbonate ions, predominantly in the proximal tubule, as well as forming bicarbonate ions through the excretion of ammonia and monophosphate ions. They are also able to increase hydrogen ion excretion and therefore increase blood pH. The bicarbonate ion is therefore a marker of metabolic homeostasis, kept between 22 and 28 millimoles per litre. A low bicarbonate concentration would suggest acidosis. This is where either there is an increase in acid in the blood or there is insufficient generation of bicarbonate ions in the kidneys. A high concentration of bicarbonate ions would suggest alkalosis, where either there is a loss of hydrogen ions or an abnormal increase in bicarbonate ions. In a metabolic acidosis, the acidemia is either caused by an increase in hydrogen ions or a loss of bicarbonate ions. To help determine the cause, you can calculate the anion gap. This uses the main cation in the blood, which is sodium, and subtracts the main anions, which are bicarbonate and chloride. This gives the anion gap, which is usually between 8 and 16 millimoles per litre. Sometimes potassium is included in the equation as another cation, and so the normal range is increased to 12 to 20 millimoles per litre. A high anion gap is primarily caused by an increase in unmeasured anions, caused by hydrogen ions reacting with the bicarbonate ions. The most common causes of a high anion gap metabolic acidosis are lactic acidosis, ketoacidosis, toxins and renal failure. In a normal anion gap metabolic acidosis, the lost bicarbonate ions are replaced with chloride ions. The most common causes of this are diarrhoea and renal tubular acidosis. When acidemia or alkalemia develop, the regulatory mechanisms to maintain a normal pH kick in and attempt to compensate for the change. The two main compensatory mechanisms are adjustments to ventilation or adjustments to kidney absorption and excretion. If a patient has a metabolic acidosis, then the bicarbonate system of maintaining homeostasis has been overwhelmed. Therefore, in order to reduce the acid burden in the blood, ventilation increases and this drives off carbon dioxide. This will reduce the carbonic acid in the blood and therefore increase the pH. Respiratory compensation usually begins in the first hour. Hypoventilation in metabolic alkalosis is less pronounced and rarely retains carbon dioxide beyond 7.5 kilopascals. If a patient has a respiratory acidosis, then the kidneys attempt to retain more bicarbonate ions and to excrete more hydrogen ions in order to raise the pH. This takes several days to achieve, so tends to be evident in chronic respiratory conditions. You can complete the full module and learn more at learning.bmj.com.